we're going to go ahead and discuss the sizes of cations and anions. First, let's go ahead and compare the uh, atomic radii of sodium and magnesium with the sizes of their ions. So first, I'm going to draw the electronic configuration for both of these particular atoms. So if we do sodium, we need to put in 11 electrons in sodium. And so we'll write 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. And that gets us to neon. And then, of course, 3s1. That'd be the electronic configuration for sodium. And then for magnesium, we'll just have two electrons in the 3s. The sizes of these particular two atoms are 186 picometers for sodium and 160 picometers for magnesium. We recall that magnesium is a little bit smaller than uh, sodium because remember as you move across the period the effective nuclear charge increases pulling in the valence electrons which in both cases are, are the 3s electrons those get pulled in a little tighter now if we want to make the sodium ion well we're just going to remove one electron and it's going to be this 3s electron so by removing that one electron we end up getting this particular electronic configuration in which only the uh, out to the second shell is full. And notice we remove this full outer uh, third shell electron. And so that's going to cause a contraction of, of the size of the, of the particular particle upon moving from the uh, atom to the cation. So this would be the sodium cation. You're removing a full shell. You're keeping the same nuclear charge, but removing an entire shell and so what we see upon removing that particular electron, we go down to 102 picometers for the size of the sodium cation compared to almost twice that for the sodium atom. So we see a contraction upon going from the atom to the cation. And the same kind of thing happens when we go from magnesium to magnesium 2 plus we actually end up getting the same electronic configuration because we're going to move both of these two 3s electrons to get this particular electronic configuration, which is the same as that of neon, the nearest noble gas. Once again, we remove that entire 3s uh, subshell. And so you remove that third shell, you're really going to contract the size of that particular uh, particle that's made upon moving from magnesium to magnesium two plus, which would be this here, that's the electronic configuration. And sure enough, the configuration of magnesium two plus is 72 picometers. And that's because you have a, a slightly larger uh, effective nuclear charge that's, and a larger nucleus is going to pull these electrons even tighter. And so even though these two are, we call them isoelectronic, they have the same electronic configuration. With sodium, there's a plus 11 nucleus pulling in those electrons, and here there's a plus 12, which causes a further contraction than you see in sodium. And this is indeed the case. It tends to be the case that the larger the positive charge that you see on a cation, the bigger the difference, the more the contraction between the cation that's formed and the atom from which it came. But this is a general idea that you should recognize that cations are smaller than the atoms from which they came. And the larger the positive charge on the cation that's formed, a plus two versus a plus one, the bigger the shrinkage that you see between the cation and the anion. Excuse me, between the cation and the, and the atom. Now let's look at the case where we're going to compare what happens to uh, atoms when they go from the atom to the anion. And we'll do this with uh, nitro nitrogen going to nitride and oxygen going to oxide. So in this case, we'll go ahead and we will write the electronic configurations of nitrogen. We'll do that first. So that's going to be 1s2 for these two. 2s2 for these two electrons, and then 2p3 to get us to nitrogen. 
And then for oxygen, it's going to be very similar. 1s2, 2s2, but instead of 2p3, we're going to have 2p1234. Now, the sizes of nitrogen and oxygen, the sizes of those atoms, it's 71 picometers for nitrogen and 66 picometers for oxygen, which we would expect because, of course, as we move across the periodic table, we tend to see shrinkage in the size of the atoms because of increasing effective nuclear charge. In the case of nitrogen going to nitride, Nitrogen is going to gain three electrons to fill this 2p subshell. So we're going to end up getting an electronic configuration that is isoelectronic with the nearest noble gas, which is neon. Isoelectronic meaning the, meaning the same electronic configuration. And this would be the electronic configuration for the nitride ion. And you can probably imagine if we're putting more electrons into this 2p subshell and actually putting in electrons into the same orbitals, we know that electrons uh, repel one another. And that repulsion is going to cause a expansion of that outer shell. It's going to cause it to be a little bigger. And that repulsion is going to increase with the more electrons that you stick in. So we're sticking in three electrons into nitrogen to make nitride. We're going to expect a fairly large increase in the size of the anion compared to that of the atom. And sure enough, nitride is 146 picometers, which is over twice the size of the nitrogen atom. If we go from oxygen to oxide, well, that's going to be an O2 minus. So we're going to put two electrons in here. Notice we're not putting in as many electrons. We're not putting three in. In this case, we're only putting in two. But nevertheless, we end up getting the same electronic configuration as the nearest noble gas, neon. So when I put these two electrons in, one, two, that's going to fill the 2p subshell. And we see that oxide and nitride are isoelectronic with one another. They have the same electronic configuration. And it turns out that the oxide ion is 140 picometers, which is a little bit smaller than the nitride ion. And this is because we're only putting two electrons into oxide, whereas we put three into nitrogen to make nitride. But in contrast, sort of to cap this, in contrast to the cations, which shrink as you go from the atom to the cation, Anions do the opposite. When you add electrons to atoms to make the anions, the size of the anion increases. So what we say here is anions are larger than the atoms from which they come from.